So I thought that we did. I thought that that means that we have execution on it. So that means that there's something else going on. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Meow. The <laughs> Promise it'll make sense. If you're new here, my name's Ash. I'm 27. I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast, and on this channel, we do all things cybersecurity, productivity, and hacking. On today's video, we're going over another Try Hack Me walkthrough. For my notes on this room and all my other previous rooms, check the description for hack notes. While you're down there, if you need timestamps or links, they'll be in the description. All right, let's get started. So I've logged into Try Hack Me. We're on the network, and we've got Thompson, and there is a cat. Cats go meow. So I've gone ahead and Boot my machine up. There's nothing but read the user text and root text. So that's all we've got to go on. Let's go ahead and ping our machine so we can see it. Classic Rust scan. So first up we have SSH and then we have two other ports. 8080 can sometimes be used like for a development web service. So perhaps that's what we've got. And we can see that we do have a HTTP proxy running and then something else that I have no idea on 8009. Let's go ahead and look at these in more detail. And while that's running, let's Let's go open up port 8080, our server on the IP address. So we have a version of Apache, the web server called Tomcat, and we have a version number of 8. Five, five. So that might come into play looking for an exploit. Looking back at our Nmap scan, not too much more about this. I'm really not sure what this is. We again get a confirmation of our version number. But there's really not much more information here. So let's go run a Ferox Buster scan. So we can run it against port 8080. And we just want to specify our words lists. And what I'm finding works really well is the sec lists in discovery web content using the common.txt. So it looks like we found docs, examples, host manager. We have some subdirectories within docs and we also have manager. But the two of interest for us is gonna be this manager and host manager because we are looking for maybe like an admin page, something to log into. So let's start looking here. So straight out of the gate, I'm greeted with a login. Um, So just can we do admin admin, admin password, no go. And it looks like it's the same for the host manager. But interestingly enough, if we actually just hit cancel on the login, we get a 401 unauthorized, but we're actually provided with way more information than we should. So the instructions are telling us where like our user login information can be stored, um, but it even goes a step further and gives us an example login of the user Tomcat and a password of secret spelled with a three. So believe it or not, we can actually use the login of Tomcat and secret if I can spell it right. And that's actually gonna work for both manager and host manager, which seem like they do show different areas. So on our manager page, we have a few areas. We can see the different directories that have the documentation, examples. There is something else here um, that just leaves us hanging. And I even looked in Burp Suite for more information. I could find anything about that so I'm not sure what's up with that and after searching around a little bit I came back to this WAR file to deploy area where we can upload and this is how we can get a further foothold into the machine so using MSF Venom let's generate a reverse shell and we're gonna save this off as reverse.war cool so that'll take a couple of seconds and now we have our reverse shell here and make sure you set your IP to your IP and your port to whatever you like so I'm gonna set up a netcat listener on port 4242. Let's go back to the browse. Let's select our reverse shell and upload that and select deploy. Now in our applications, we have this new reverse directory. So let's go and select that. That's gonna activate our reverse shell. And if we go back to our system, we can indeed see we have a connection. Great, so we're logged in as Tomcat. So let's upgrade our shell. So we'll use Python to do so. We'll go control Z, paste in this and then this. And now we have a full shell. All right, so let's start off by looking in the home directory and we have a new user of Jack. So let's list out what he's got. So we have three files in here. The first one that is jumping out is indeed gonna be that user.txt. So let's grab that, paste that first flag into try hack me, and let's cd over into our directory of Jack and list out our files in a little bit more detail. So we have a few other things going on, but the file of interest is definitely this id.sh. Super sus. Everyone has got executable permissions on this. So let's just have a look at what it's doing. It's running a bash script and it's piping ID and the outputs of ID into test.txt, which we have here. So if we look
look at test, we can see the ID output of root. So this is super sus. We can't execute this. We don't have permissions to actually execute it. So I thought that we did. I thought that that means that we have execution on it. So that means that there's something else going on. So we can do further enumeration and we actually cat out what the cron tab is doing. We can see here every few moments that root CDs into the directory of home Jack and then runs this ID through back. So that this is executed every few moments or so. So since we have the ability to actually read and write to it, so let's open that up in nano. We can comment out what's currently in there and let's go ahead and paste in a reverse shell. This is gonna talk back to my system on port quad four. So let's go ahead and start up that listening port. We'll save that off and we'll just wait. Okay, that took like a second. Usually it took a little bit longer last time. Now we can run who am I? And I definitely see that we are indeed root. So we can go to the root directory. We can cat out our root.txt. Great, and we can copy that over to try hack me. We can paste it in and awesome, there we go. That is the last flag. We, uh, we got privileges as root and yeah, we found the flag. So thank you so much for watching up until now. I hope you enjoyed that room. These CTFs have been a nice way of going over the basics. So it's refreshing, plus it is pushing the boundaries to figure this stuff out. Honestly, the more CTFs that I do like this, it really feels like I'm at the gym and I'm just repping. Like it's just all about the consistent reps now. So it's fun. And it's just about consistency. We just need to keep doing these CTFs to improve. So again, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to do all the YouTube stuff. Leave a like and comment, subscribe. I really do appreciate it. It helps out the channel. Up on the screen, you're going to see a recommended video to Anon Force, the last Try Hack Me walkthrough I did. So check that out. And the last thing before you go is there is going to be something coming in March. So definitely be subscribed for that. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. All right, thanks guys.